So I take a two gram balloon and I add four grams of butane to it. How much does it weigh? The answer is actually four grams. And I was really impressed by just how many of you actually got the right answer. And when you understand the right answer, you'll also understand why the only thing you need to be able to fly is nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now, for our everyday lives, mass and its expression in a gravitational field of weight is mostly conserved. Mostly. Either I become impervious to antimatter explosions, or we're still dreaming. Indeed, seeing as we live essentially our entire lives in this atmosphere and in this gravitational field applying this constant force to our mass, we largely see mass and weight as interchangeable terms. That is, scales typically give us weights in grams, whereas what they're actually doing is they're measuring the force on an object and then converting that into a mass. However, for this video, I'm just going to gloss over that. A weight is just what you get when you put it on the scales. Mass? Well, mass is mass, irrespective of what forces are acting on it. So I can take this balloon with a mass of 2 grams and I can put 2 litres of hydrogen in it. Now that 2 litres of hydrogen weighs 0.2 grams. That is, I've actually increased the entire mass of this balloon and its contents. But now it floats. Well, just about. Now the reason it does that is because it's displaced 2 litres of air. And that 2 litres of air that it displaced had a mass of about 2 grams. So when I do the same thing with butane, I now have my 2 gram balloon with my 2 litres of butane weighing hmm, about 4 grams. So the balloon weighs 2 grams, it's displaced about 2 litres of air, giving us about 2 grams of buoyancy, and we have 4 grams of butane in the balloon. So the total weight is 4 grams. That is, any object gets free buoyancy of the mass of air that it displaces. So for instance, I weigh about 100 kilos, hmm, give or take, about 200 pounds. So that means that I displace about 100 litres of air, which means that if I were to actually boil the atmosphere off this planet, or maybe something a little less genocidal, maybe if I just stepped into a vacuum chamber, then I would actually weigh about 100 grams more because I no longer have the buoyancy of the atmosphere. So how can you fly on nothing? Absolutely nothing. Well, think about it. With the hydrogen balloon, the one that floats, you've actually put 0.2 of a gram of mass into that balloon, and that's good enough to make it float. Well, what if I put nothing into that balloon? Nothing at all. I fill it with a vacuum. No gas is required. That would provide the greatest lift that it's possible to get out of such a balloon. Indeed, to demonstrate this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zero that now. So this is what the flask weighs when it's full of air. And I'm now going to evacuate it to see if once it's full of vacuum again, if it's still 162 milligrams lighter than when it's full of air. So I've got a vacuum on over here. Okay, so again, we're full of vacuum. Now let's see if it really is 160 milligrams lighter than it was before. Oh, 162 milligrams. So that's the reproducibility of science. So why don't we have vacuum airships? Well, there's just one tiny problem with vacuum containing structures, and that's that they tend to get crushed by the atmosphere. But if you can build a vacuum container that weighs on average less than one gram per liter of its volume, then you would have a vacuum balloon, a balloon that would float on literally nothing. Now it's my reckoning that with the current state of materials technology, with things like mylar film and carbon fiber, that the vacuum balloon is now actually technologically possible. It's just no one's got around to making one, with the obvious thought that maybe what we need is something along the lines of the X Prize, but for a vacuum balloon, maybe something like the, the V Prize. I mean, just imagine how cool that would be. How really cool that would be to have something that floats on literally nothing. 